All right, gamers, are you ready for the anchovy games? We're we're doing we're doing anchovy rainmaker. Back and talking about Rainmaker, so it is time for us to talk about the objective line. Remember with Rainmaker, since there are multiple paths available, there are going to be a couple of different objective lines because depending on which direction they move, you're going to have to shift to cover a different angle of approach to the goal. Anchovy Games has some wacky ones. Just about the entire stage can potentially matter depending on what people are trying to do with it. One of the first things that we need to talk about with Anchovy is what ways into the enemy base are actually available. Because on Clam Blitz, for example, you have a wall right here that allows you to climb right up into the enemy office. But that's not here in most other modes, and it's not here in this mode either. The options you do have are going up over this wall, are going over this fan, and there is a third one, in case you didn't know. You can climb up this pillar, stand at the top, shoot the fan to bring this platform over to you, and then you can take the Rainmaker onto this platform, sit and wait for the platform to naturally return to its original location, at which point you can move onto this platform, drop it down, and be right next to the gold. Let's talk about those three different options real quick. So I'll draw them one by one. So, the first one is going this way and coming up over the top and doing one of these. This is a pretty good option. If you can make this work, this is a pretty good one to go for. The biggest weakness of this option is that it takes you underneath this area right here for such a long time, and that is one of the better defensive positions. But all in all, it's a really good slow steady push option because you're starting from high ground. If the defenders are trying to defend from here, you have high ground over them whether you come from this direction or whether you go down the ramp and so you actually don't have a lot of advantages as the defending team unless you're using this in particular right here once you get a little bit further forward this becomes more of an option to defend from and that's something that we'll talk about a little bit more on defense so you do have to watch out for that a little bit but most of the time once you've gotten to around this place on the line you are just hugging this wall and sprinting for as many points as you can earn yourself. That's a really solid option, only really forces you to deal with something like this and some players who might be playing around this piece of cover. Not a bad choice at all. Going over the fan is a little bit more of a fast break option. This is definitely the fastest way to get into the enemy base, but it's also a relatively high commitment and exposed option. When this fan goes up in the air, and the Rainmaker is starting to move on it, it's very obvious where it wants to go next. And your only options are to drop off in this direction, drop off in this direction, get off the fan entirely, or stay further back on the fan and wait for something else to happen. You don't have to shut down a very big arc on the map to prevent this push from going anywhere. So like I said, this is a fast break. If you know that you have a numbers advantage for the next five seconds or so, you can get it over the top of the fan and drop it down into this area for a moderate number of points pretty quickly. At that point though, it's usually kind of a free-for-all and you want maybe your Rainmaker to be backing up a little bit, letting the frontliners get in front and create some space for it and only then start moving forward. With both of those options, Something that you need to consider as the Rainmaker is the utility of hugging this wall very, very tightly. Right under here especially, it's very difficult for anybody to be able to shoot the Rainmaker from any angle. Basically the only option you've got is defending from here or defending from like right here. So you as the Rainmaker carrier only have to watch in the direction that you're looking and your teammates really only have to worry about controlling this area to keep the Rainmaker safe as you go around. There is the sponge up here, which is a place that you will see a lot of defenders stand on to try and shoot down at you, but that's also one of the easiest places to attack as the attacking team. All you have to do is either shoot the sponge or shoot the player. Eventually you will end up doing both, probably. You'll shoot the sponge until it shrinks so much that now you're suddenly shooting the player, and it'll throw their aim off, it'll prevent them from moving up onto the next level and it will get them stuck in your shots. This is not a great defensive position right here that's very exposed to any attacking players who happen to be looking at it. 
So usually you've got some help if you run the Rainmaker through this corner and over in this direction. Another advantage of taking this particular angle as I've drawn it is that you're using the pedestal as cover from spawn. Anybody from this direction is going to be shooting from one of these angles at the Rainmaker. And you see, if you come in from this particular angle, all of them are going to hit the pedestal and not you. And they're going to be forced to either make a clutch shot as you're in the Rainmaker dunking animation, or make a very, very risky drop down to try and get around the pedestal and stop you from over here, or from over here. Both of those options are probably going to be cut off by your frontliners anyway, because as you're doing this, your frontliners are sweeping in in this direction and in this direction and trying to spawn camp and lock those people out. This right here is a really powerful angle to take once you're able to get into this position. You'll probably expect to get some really good points. Uh, the tighter you can hug this corner, the better. Highly recommend using Rainmaker shot canceling like you would use substrafing to get around this corner so that you don't swing any wider and maybe give an angle on somebody who's shooting at you in this direction. Those are the two main objective lines that I'm going to recommend. Uh, the reason I'm not going to recommend this angle is because of how much counterplay there is to it. If you take the Rainmaker this far over, they're going to be able to see what you're planning on doing pretty quickly if they're keeping an eye on their peripheral vision, on their heads-up display, on their sight that they get on the Rainmaker just because somebody has picked it up. If you move over to the right, they're going to expect the fan first. And once you realize that the fan is not where they're going and they're actually going further to the right, there's only one thing they could be trying to do, and that is go up this way. Going up on the right-hand side requires you to paint this wall, get on top of here, fire shots to hit this thing, wait for the f platform to move over to the right for you, get on the platform, and after all of that time, the defending team should have time to get somebody up here and have them in position. They don't need to do anything more than paint this fan. If they paint that fan, then the enemy team is going to be pushed back because the platform is going to move and push them backwards. The platform needs to advance to about here before the Rainmaker can actually get off onto the place that they want to be at right here. And you can just deny that by like throwing bombs at the fan or shooting the fan with a long-ranged weapon. You can just perpetually keep them stuck on this platform because the only way forward is for this platform not to get shot. It's not that like they can paint the fan and outpaint you, it's that if anyone paints the fan, it goes in the wrong direction for them. They need the fan to just not get painted. After all of this setup time, what should happen in an X rank match is players should know about this, should get up into a position like right here and just completely prevent this platform from moving until the Rainmaker push is stalled out. The advantage of this push is that if you do somehow manage to get this platform over all the way so that you can jump off and get to this position, you're guaranteed some pretty good points. Um, getting to the edge here is something like 30, and being able to drop it down, it gets you to something like 25. So you're scoring pretty quickly at that point, and before you drop down, you have all the high ground you could want, being able to just shoot down over this direction. If the defensive team basically screws up and lets you get here, then you actually do have a really good push. But that should never happen is the problem. A team who knows what they're doing will just recognize how much of a weakness in this play this platform is in that it takes you too long to get onto it and too long for you to wait for it to retract back into place that that gives you enough time to get into position to stop it either from going this way or from taking this fan over and getting off on this angle and you should be able to stop that before it gets very far past like the 70s one rainmaker push option that I forgot to mention because it's still bad and you still shouldn't do it, but it is slightly better than the other bad option, is that from this right side, when you pull the platform to you over here, you've got this wall right here that you can paint the side of. And instead of just sitting on the platform and waiting for it to slowly move back in this direction, 
The better thing to do is to paint up the side of this wall and to hop up over the top of this wall here. And from here, what you're usually going to do is you're gonna jump onto this corner of the wall as soon as you possibly can and immediately drop it down to here where you can paint and start swimming from this direction. This is significantly faster than trying to go this way, but it is significantly slower than any of the other options available to you still. Going over the fan is still the fastest path and going to the left is still faster than doing this and it's also safer. So again, I don't recommend going this way, but if you are going to go this way, if somebody makes the call that this is what you're going to do, consider just hopping it off on this wall and dropping it down and making a more traditional push from there. So those are your three objective lines. To draw them out really quickly, you've got this, you've got this, or maybe this, and then, if you're crazy, you got this. And those are your Rainmaker paths. Talking about weapon rolls now. Like we always say, the Slayers and Skirmishers, the frontline weapons and maybe some midline weapons, their job is to take your point on the objective line and move it as far forward as you can. When you have the Rainmaker, that is your point on the objective line, and your job as an offensive player is to make sure that the entire radius around that Rainmaker is safe from players who would try to splat it. And your whole job as the Rainmaker moves forward on this line is to keep this radius, this perimeter of safety around it, so you're either splatting or displacing enemy players who enter this zone, and otherwise you're painting forward so that the Rainmaker can advance on the line as quickly as possible. Remember, as with other Rainmaker maps that we've talked about, you need to make sure that this circle around the Rainmaker does not get too big. If you're a frontliner, for example, and you're all the way up here trying to spawn camp while the Rainmaker is still back here, that gives the opposing team way too many different options for getting in between you and where the Rainmaker has to go. You are not helping your team by being in this position most of the time because there are just too many ways that the opponents can circumnavigate you, get to the Rainmaker and stop it while ignoring you. You need to put yourself in a position where the enemy team does actually have to deal with you. So if you're right here, that means that you wanna be somewhere on this radius around the Rainmaker. Behind it is completely valid, because for example what might happen if you're on this position is some fast zippy weapon decides to drop out in this direction and try to flank up behind the Rainmaker like this. And in this kind of situation, being behind the Rainmaker lets you protect them from that. So usually I do recommend having a player either beside the Rainmaker like this, or behind the Rainmaker like this, while you have the rest of the team pushing up in front of it because flanks are just so common and there are so many weapons that will want to go for them that you never know, you know, someone may just drop down behind it and you'll have to deal with that then. Talking about ways to attack on this map in general, one of the strongest defensive positions that you have is actually just straight from mid. If you sit a backliner up on this position, or here, or here, or even here, all of these are really powerful locations for them because they have so much high ground over everything that's going on in mid. And as long as they're keeping a close eye on the two ways that you have to push them, here and here, they should be able to see any pressure that's coming toward them long before they have to deal with it. As the frontliner, your big challenge is how do I displace long range weapons that are in this position for long enough that I can get up over the top and maybe get behind this cover, maybe get behind this wall looking this way, and clear them out at short range like my weapon is good at doing. You might also consider if you're something like a brush player, something that moves pretty quickly, going for this flank without the rest of your team going in that direction so that you can come around on the side like this and get a flank on the enemy team while they're positioned in these kinds of places, maybe looking at your team coming this way. 
This flank is very long. It's very time consuming. It's a huge commitment to go for it. But a lot of the time people aren't going to expect that pressure because of it. And so for something that can move fast and can get in there, it can be worth it. What I see uh, do this the most is actually beacon weapons. Something like a Red Dabble Dooleys or the Octobrush that has beacons actually does really well here because they can just drop a beacon in this location that takes the defending team well out of their way to get rid of. And what it does is basically reduce the cost of going for this flank because even if you go for that flank and it doesn't work out for you super well, when you respawn, instead of having to run all the way out and do all of that again, you can just super jump straight to that beacon and then resume the flanking from there until they deal with that beacon. If I were going to try and do that flank, I would probably want something that does have beacons to be able to set them up there for myself, because even if those beacons are getting destroyed, at least what's happening is that's taking the enemy team out of play for a little bit as they go and try to handle that situation. As the attacking team, once you've secured this area, so you've cleared this out of backliners, which is the first challenge, which we've been talking about here, your next step is to secure enough of office that the Rainmaker can move through there. It should also be someone's job to do something about this right here, because like we said, this is a huge threat to this Rainmaker push. Usually what this requires is something like an inkjet over the top, something like missiles or a bunch of bomb spam being put up here, something to displace these players. Uh, Booyah can help sometimes, Stingray can help sometimes, not that you'd probably be using a Stingray yourself. There needs to be some kind of pressure up here, because otherwise, as soon as the Rainmaker gets to about here, someone just drops behind it and now you're getting flanked. You need to make sure that you know what's going on on the top left as the Rainmaker is trying to move down the ramp. Office itself should actually be relatively easy to clear out because you have so much high ground leading up into it. You have the advantage as the attacking team being in these positions. The only places they can really hide are behind this piece of cover and behind this wall. And those positions don't necessarily always matter that much because you're trying to push the Rainmaker this way. So if one of their players over here gets pushed back this far, you can kind of think of them as being out of play. And then all you need to do is focus on someone who's back here. And this is a very small piece of cover. As soon as it gets flanked around or a bomb gets thrown behind it, that's, that position is going to collapse very quickly. At that point, the only thing that's really going to stop you is something like this or somebody who's trying to drop out from spawn. And dropping out from spawn is very disadvantageous. Like we've talked about, it doesn't give you a good angle on the Rainmaker Carrier as they approach the goal. There's a lot of cover the Rainmaker Carrier can take, and this slope right here also can make it hard for a frontline weapon who's in this position to get an angle on someone who's right here, because if they aim down too far, they shoot the floor instead of being able to shoot the player. So usually you actually have the advantage pushing up in this direction and pushing up around this direction to secure the pedestal, and as long as you haven't let someone in behind the Rainmaker, once you get into this kind of position, it should be game over. Supports, and we're going to talk about Rainmaker carrying on this map. It's really important for you to take control of mid when you have the opportunity to, to paint all of this up, because mid is very wide open and very paintable, and being able to control that means that the enemy team is going to take an awful lot longer to set up their own push once they regain control, if they successfully defend. Because if the Rainmaker resets, but the whole area up here is painted, they're going to have to spend a good three or four seconds just unpainting it to be able to get to the Rainmaker in the first place. And then they're going to have to spend another three or four seconds unpainting all of this to give themselves a way forward. And if they don't paint all of it and they only paint their own way forward, that gives you potential flank routes to come around in the other direction. You're wasting a lot of their time by taking control of mid when you have the ability to paint and do that. Obviously, having all of this area painted is also just really useful tactically. Your frontliners are going to get a lot of advantage out of that because they need to scoot around underneath the watchful eye of something like a charger or a splatling standing up in this commanding position that controls all of this space. And so if they have to push into enemy ink while they're doing all of that, they're a lot more likely to get isolated and shot out 
than if this whole area is painted their color and they're kind of zipping around and making the charger player miss. Also consider that you as a support weapon, you usually have bomb spam, and you are the perfect weapon to sit up here and delay this fan by throwing bombs at it for as long as you darn well want to. As the Rainmaker Carrier, like I said, your most likely option is going to be trying to go up this way, although you're really going to follow your frontliners, um, so wherever it is that they start painting after you gain an advantage, it's either going to be here or here most of the time. If somebody starts you off in this direction, I would recommend just going someplace else and this swaying them so they stop. At most, you want that one frontliner to maybe take this flank and meet you on the other side, but I would not recommend following them. I think that this push is pretty bad. And the only real reason that you would go for this is if you have a read on the opponents, that they are not going to expect it or know how to defend it, and that they're going to over-rotate to one direction while you go the other and have a chance to actually get into this position and start dropping it down from there. You really need your opponents to be like committed to being in this part of the map and fighting there if you're going to make this play and actually make it across in time. So obviously never rule out any option that you have, but against high enough level players, just do not expect for this to work. It's got way too much counterplay and that counterplay is too easy. You really need something like a Stingray to like get rid of someone who's over here just to give you enough time to get the Rainmaker jumped across. And again, getting the Rainmaker jumped across, that's only like, I think 65 once you get it off the, the platform there. You get those points before you even get to this position going from mid. Like look at how much faster this is. If you're going for fast points, you're gonna get it better from going here. And the only advantage of going the top side is that if you are somehow able to make it this position, you've got it to about 25 or 30, and that's not as bad of a push at all. As you're coming from this direction, you're a really good weapon to be firing up over the top and taking out positions like these, flushing them out. Realize though, that if you flush players out from this position, one of the most likely things for them to do is to drop down and rush you. That's one of the things you have to realize about, you know, popping missiles up here, about using Rainmaker shots, maybe even ink jetting up here, is that you've made it so that they can't be here. Where are they going to go? Well, they might drop back in this direction. They might drop off the ledge over here and try and hide, or they might just go forward seeing that you have left the Rainmaker alone. So if you're making those shots as the Rainmaker, realize that what you might be doing is forcing the opponent close to you, forcing them to rush you, and you might need to back up really quickly if you actually succeed in doing that and let your frontliners help you. Uh, maybe even this way if they don't, you don't think that they're spotting it. You slowly work your way down, just getting bit by bit here, waiting for your frontliners to do their jobs. Firing shots over here is really good. Firing shots behind this cover is really good. Once you get a little bit closer, firing shots up here to prevent these players from lasering you from there is a really good idea. But once you do have a route forward, you're going to try and, again, hug the wall and take this particular path because that gives you the most cover against basically everything but this guy right here. If you are in maybe this position and it's not quite safe to go here yet, you have the ability to take your time. You can maybe rotate to this side of cover so you can right side peek around it. You could, if you needed to, back up even further in this direction and use the high ground to hit people here. Just gotta watch out for defensive players that come out from this direction and try and drop on you, because that is a thing that uh, players will do sometimes. And taking a position like this might help you stall long enough for your frontliners to get control of the situation and give you a way to start moving forward again. At this point, I would probably move to the pillow before moving any further forward, so I have at least a little bit of cover and I'm not just running across open ground. Uh, but watch out for bombs, because that's going to be one of the prime targets for them to throw them. Backlines! As a backliner, as always, it's especially important to think about where the Rainmaker is about to be, because you are one of the most positioning-dependent weapons in the game. 
you need good locations to stand in order to have an impact on the match and taking a good position can make or break your ability to have any impact defensive positions that you're going to want to take if they have the rainmaker like we've mentioned before here and here are two extremely strong ones that let you control this much of the map and just completely prevent them from even approaching either of the angles that they want to get the Rainmaker across on. You need to be careful from this position because you're really close to the fan, which is one of their fastest ways to get over the top. And as the fan rises, it can put itself out of your line of sight. So if you're something like a Charger, a Splatling, and the fan is up and it's like, you know, five feet above, you're not going to be able to land shots on somebody who comes over. And that's one of the best ways for a frontline weapon to approach you because they can close distance on you while you can't shoot them and then just kind of land right next to you. So as soon as this fan goes up and you have any reason to believe that there is an enemy player on that fan, you need to either be retreating to this direction to be able to get shots on them from over here, or you need to be retreating behind here onto the grates and kind of backing up so that if they do rush you, you still have range advantage on them because you're shooting them from here and they have to cross over this unpaintable grate to get to you. There is a non-traditional position that Devi likes to take right here as a Hydra player. Because you're able to right peek around this wall, standing on these grates here with your charge ready, especially with a splatling that's going to have a lot of run speed, enables you to quickly step out in this direction and have full charge and have control over this whole corridor, which, like we've said, is the most likely place that the enemy team is going to be starting to push from. So this can be a really good sneak attack if you think you've got an opportunity to. Just realize that you're very exposed as soon as you step out there and you're immediately target number one. So you wanna be kind of using your camera control to peek around this wall before you make such a play so that you know where your targets are immediately and anybody who's relatively close to you becomes your first priority to take down. Also, as the backline weapon, one of your strongest positions is up here. This gives you a ton of high ground and you, you have some cover and you can back up out of line of sight of your opponents. The disadvantage of being up in this position is that it's relatively narrow. And so if the other team knows what they're doing, they're going to be pelting this with bombs. Um, they're going to be shooting up here and trying to get fall off shots. They're going to be putting ink jets over the top. They're going to be missiling this. They're going to be booyah bombing this. So you need to make sure that you have a decent amount behind you painted. Uh, especially behind you, because that's paint that's more difficult for the attacking team to contest. They need longer range to get up and paint this blue area. Make sure that all of that is painted so that you're able to move around freely. And as you get pressured from below, you're not getting your feet stuck behind you. And you actually have a way to zip away from that pressure and reposition so that you can continue to be here and continue to apply pressure and continue to stop them. This position also, like we've mentioned, is really strong for you guys. Taking the angle from here, forces the enemy team to look in a direction that they otherwise don't have to worry about. They would like to worry about what's in this direction and what's in this direction. And this right here throws a wrench in those plans and can often catch them off guard. Um, this is especially a good location to Stingray from because you have a fairly narrow corridor right here where you can expect to find basically all of your opponents that matter. And you're also pretty safe because you have more room to back up in this direction, this is more difficult high ground to contest than you would doing so from over here, uh, where you've got this narrow an area. Here, you've got a slightly longer area, um, and especially because of this cover right here, it's more difficult for them to do anything about. On offense, as the backliner, you're going to want to start by getting control of this area, and so one of the best places to do that from is to be standing right here. It gives you a little bit of elevation so that you can cover maybe this area here and prevent any backliners from just being able to step forward and get rid of your frontliners. And this position is great for covering anybody who's trying to come up this wall and start a push in this direction. Once your players are able to get this area right here under control, that's when you move up to a position like this and start to try and control this corridor in front of you using your range. From back here, or a little bit further forward depending on the weapon, you should be able to control everything up until this point in this line. So it can be very punishing for someone on the defending team to get onto this wall and pop up over the top because you're installed right here and you're looking at that angle and you're able to just delete them right away. You're also one of the better answers to someone being in this position because if you're right here and you have an angle on them, you can just 
put suppressive fire down and force them to back up or something because you have the range to hit them up there. You don't need to throw a bomb. You don't need a special for that. You can sometimes just use your main weapon and get them out of there. If we're taking the fan instead, then presumably you have a fast break. Presumably you know that this area at least is pretty clear. And so you're going to probably be able to take a position like right here on the fan so that if one of the members of the enemy team tries to drop onto the fan, they have to deal with you. Or if they try and get up over the top of the fan once the fan is raised, they again are getting right into your sight line and don't have any cover. And so you're able to completely lock the fan out from the enemy team trying to push you and stop you that way. Once you're across, you're going to be taking a position probably right here, and this is kind of where you want to advance into if you're coming from this direction. Being here lets you see an awful lot of what's going on in the enemy spawn. I shouldn't even say that, it's something like this whole area right here is stuff that you can see and have an impact on. Really, really powerful spot. Just realize that it is a little bit exposed. If somebody is able to get range on you, if your frontliners start going down like right here, you might need to back up a little bit. You might need to kind of retreat and follow the objective line further backwards as you go to try and lock your team's position as far forward as you can without actually going down. Finally, as you're attacking and trying to make it all the way in for the KO, right peeking around this piece of cover is really strong. Using this ramp right here is really strong as long as you're watching for the enemy team to take this route over here. And you can spot that flank coming pretty easily as long as somebody has eyes on this fan. Once this fan starts moving over, you have to assume that there is an opponent that is standing on it, and you have to realize that they're going to be able to come up over the top of this wall and drop on you or behind you and make that position a lot less safe. Uh, so at that point, you might want to be like retreating into the corner here so that you have line of sight over the top and they don't have range on you. Or if the push is really falling apart, you might just need to drop down into mid and retreat to a position maybe up here where you would be in neutral to defend and let your teammates get back in. This is about the furthest forward that you're usually going to be able to get because after this, you're kind of pushing uphill, you're putting yourself right next to cover, uh, you're making it so that the enemy team can probably push you pretty safely. So at this point, you're either, you know, sprinting for the Rainmaker and trying to pick it up and finish the game, or you're trying to protect the Rainmaker from about this range. Um, maybe firing shots in this direction, maybe making sure you suppress this angle or this angle, and just kind of keeping them safe as they make that final push to KO. Key positions. We've already discussed most of this, so I'm going to breeze through this pretty quickly. On offense, you're going to need to secure either this area or this area first, and then you can start the push. Then from there, you're going to be worrying about this and especially about an attack from up here. You need to throw some kind of bombs, suppressive fire there. Once you get to their office, you're going to want to secure this so that you can push up to the goal safely. And then as the defensive team, it's going to be really important for you to have a foothold here and to stop the players from getting this far in because once they do get to about this area, they are going to start having an advantage in fights over your defensive players who are rolling out here. As you roll out on defense, if the enemy team has gotten into about this area right here, you do not want to drop in this direction. There are going to be frontliners sharking here pushing up to meet you, and you just don't have a lot of cover. If you have to hide behind the Rainmaker pedestal, if you have to position right here, you are doing nothing whatsoever to be able to stop the Rainmaker. Like, think about what you can shoot. You can shoot out to here and out to here, and we color this area in. Literally none of this even touches the objective line. The Rainmaker carrier could just waltz straight up to the Rainmaker pedestal, and being in this position does not help you at all. Since you can be forced back here, unless they haven't reached this position yet, unless they haven't reached this arc that is in your office, once they do get there, you need to be considering either using this fan to come out this way, or using this fan to get onto here, or to come out this way. These are much better options, they give you off angles, they give you high ground, they make you a little bit more difficult to spot, and there's something that a frontliner on the other team cannot contest. 
the only way a frontliner gets up here is by like going all the way up here and using the fan. They're probably not going to do that. There is really no way at all for the attacking players to take this position. That's just not going to happen. Take the areas that are uncontestable while you're defending instead of filtering in through here because you will see a lot of players just dropping down here and dying in the late phases of a Rainmaker game because they're not thinking creatively enough about how to position. They're just blindly trying to put themselves in the Rainmaker's way when the Rainmaker can kind of hug cover right up until it gets to them, and you're much more likely to run into a frontliner than you are to do anything about the Rainmaker until it actually gets around this corner. Once the Rainmaker does get around this corner, you have a very small window of time to stop a KO because your sight line is going to be very limited. You have this much of an angle, this narrow of a shot on the Rainmaker before it gets to the goal. So from here to right here, if you fire a charger shot and miss and they've got all of this painted, you might not be able to fire another charger shot in time before they get it behind the pedestal and they have cover from that charger shot. It's important to keep bombs in there as any player, but realize that just standing here is probably not going to be successful as a defense if the attacking team knows what they're doing and has an advantage. What you're going to need is before the Rainmaker gets to this position to have someone in a position like this or a position like this where they have threat on the Rainmaker from a wider variety of angles and they're able to stop it before it gets into that really powerful position. Main goals. In neutral, as always, you need to first gain control of mid and the area around the Rainmaker so that you can start establishing your own offensive push. In this fight for mid, the pop definitely matters an awful lot. It controls a lot of the space around the Rainmaker. If the enemy team gets pop, you are now effectively locked out into this area right here if you're in mid for at least a short amount of time. They're going to have access to both fans and they're going to be able to start bottling you up a little bit. So it is very, very useful to get the pop here, but maybe you realize you can't. If you can't, this area right here is a pretty good place for a front liner to roll out to because from here, you're going to have a little bit of cover, a little bit of high ground over what's going on in front of you here. And you can also get picks on people who drop carelessly from fan to try and rush forward because you have the off angle on them. It's harder for them to see. Playing from the right and pushing from right to left is a strategy that generally works really well on this map. And of course, as the back line, you're gonna be posted up here looking for any picks that you can get, trying to defend your frontliners from someone trying to flank them over here, for example. You can cut that angle off and stop them from getting there. It's also really helpful to have, especially a mid-ranged weapon posted up on the left side fan because they're able to use their range to take advantage of the high ground that the fan gives them. They keep the fan painted so that they're up in the air and then they can take shots down in this direction or down in this direction if they want to without really having to worry too much about someone pushing here. Because if they're keeping a close enough eye on this angle, this player pops up over the wall and they have no cover. So a longer ranged weapon can just already be ready to pre-fire that. And if you see something coming, you have some space to back up. You have your range that you can use. The only cover that they've got is the fan itself. And so as long as you can maybe retreat to a position like this and the fan is still up, you either catch them as they try to push around you and don't have range on you yet, or worst case scenario, they're painting the fan because, you know, this is their cover. You just hop back off onto here and retreat in this direction like a backliner would. And now the, the frontliner who's trying to push in against you still doesn't have range advantage on you and still doesn't have cover to work with. It can be useful to put a mid-ranged weapon on here. That's also really good for defending a backline weapon who's in this position because the fan is one of the fastest flank angles that somebody's going to be able to take to get to them. And it's a lot less obvious which way they're going to go. They could come out in this direction and drop down here and go this way. They could stop right here and use this sidewall for cover. They could jump all the way across here and just rush you really quickly. It's a little bit more ambiguous what someone's going to do once they get control of your side fan. Having that all locked down by this kind of supportive crossfire style of weapon, something like a Splattershot Pro, something like a Nautilus, something like a Squeezer, this can often be a pretty good position for them to take. 
And then if the fight ends up being more on the right hand side, they still have the ability to impact that. Once that fight in mid is won, you're just following the objective line. And you're either trying to keep your point on the objective line safe by forming a protective perimeter around the Rainmaker carrier, or if you're the enemy team, you are trying to breach this perimeter by slowing down the Rainmaker itself, putting bombs in front of it, painting it, and finding ways during the time that you're stalling it to get picks on the players and create holes in this perimeter so that you can sneak through and get to the Rainmaker carrier. Usually this location right here is where you're going to pop a lot of your specials and you might use some specials here to get yourself the last leg of the way forward. But right here is where the enemy team has the strongest defense and so that's usually what you're going to want to use your overwhelming force to get through. That'll do it for Rainmaker Anchovy Games. Thanks for watching everybody. If you liked the content and want to consider supporting me, I have a Patreon link in the description. I would really appreciate support there. Patreon supporters get the choice of which map modes out of the ones I have footage for I do in which order. So if you want some input on which map mode guide you're going to be able to see next, that would be a way to get it. Even if you're not able to support financially, really appreciate a like and a subscription to the channel. That goes a long way towards helping grow this thing and hopefully, if the channel grows big enough, I'll be able to do this full time and have a whole bunch of resources for new players as they come into the scene when Splatoon 3 drops in September. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.